here at Windscrapt and Interesting, we've made some wild and wonderful flying wind turbines or kite turbines. Each one of them needs a ground station to take power out. Here we're going to go over the ground stations and have a look at how they're made. A guide to the hardware, um, well, I'll give you the software guide as well. Uh, the working of a ground station for um, an airborne wind turbine. And yeah, we've got some electronic parts there. Some controllers, a control box, um, wind data, the, the power switching stuff, and you've got the, the parts. The, the, the main part here is the, the power takeoff wheel. In this piece, this connects uh, via these tabs on the outside of a wheel up to a rotary kite turbine. Um, it's just basically, you can see a road bike wheel. And that's a really standard, a yeah, very standard road bike wheel there. It's on a that's a Hope Pro Four hub, fancy hub, um, but it's a I prefer a, a for for going up in the next size. It'd be good to have a larger dish on the wheel so that you've got more capacity to take force uh, with actual loading. You've got. It's sitting on a stub axle, which connects in here. That axle goes right through, through the hub, uh, comes out here, where there's a thrust bearing. So this thrust bearing here is a little bit loose, and it's also just with a, a circlip on there, which, uh, well, that never burst. A few. Um, so that's just cut into the shaft there. This, I wonder, will that come off? Does that? <sighs> no. But there's a, an eye bolt uh, on the end. I've tapped into that uh, shaft there, put an eye bolt on, hoping um, in future revisions. And we've had before a hollow shaft uh, when, when we had the bicycle, we might be able to uh, winch the main line of the, the main lifting kite up and down through a hollow axis. We'll see about that. Um, some design ideas, I'd considered putting a load cell out here for tension sensing on the main line. Um, that would possibly also show tension from the whole, uh, the whole set as you've loaded out this way. You'd get you know, uh, maybe a tension reading on there. Then again, you could, you know, uh, on this one, we've got this load cell here, which is measuring, can you see, as that pulls out, there's a wee sort of slot, uh, slot in here. It's not, you know, not very well held in this. The, the hole that's going through this neck part of the, this uh, body piece, the hole that's in that where this bolt goes through is slightly too big. So there is a bit of flex there. So that this tension meter can measure how much tension is going up actually. Now, the kite, as it's going around, spins clockwise. Um, that whole set spins like that. You've got a fairly standard 500 watt uh, bike motor there, which has <laughs> been generating at over a kilowatt and a half, so it's done very well. Uh, now, the, the link onto that, like I say, it's standard bike stuff, but we've got a uh, track chain there. So it's a fairly strong standard for a bike chain. And uh, drop down, I think this is a 47 tooth, I think. Um, might be more, I think that's 47. And in the middle there, we have uh, an SPM, PM7. That's a, a spider crank power meter, uh, a cycle one. So you've got a, a crank standard on this chain ring, uh, as it would be on a bike, but in the center of that, it's um, been cut so that it fits the brake mount standard of the hub. So that the what's normally a crank meter goes onto a hub here instead. I think, what's this, this is a, a 22 tooth 
tuning ring doing on there. So not a massive reduction, but the reason I couldn't put a smaller one on here than we had with a, a different version was you've got this uh, sort of flange in here that was getting in the way of the chain, I think, when we went on to uh, a smaller tooth. Now, this, uh, this whole assembly is a wee bit open, you know, catching a, a finger in here is not going to be a pleasant um, outcome. And this is, is fairly rattly, this, this whole set, it's all a bit, a bit jakey, janky. Um, technical words. Let's come around. So there was a, there's a little magnet on there which triggers the parameter rotation. Um, that all gets recorded remotely and I can't see the device here at the moment actually, sorry. So there's a little, normally a little parameter sits down here, tells you what's going on. Um, yeah, the motor is mounted, that's all. That's welded on here and here. That's just, you know, that's so pure the way that's made. And you can see the slack in the chain there. Too slack. Uh, the motor should be pushed out a wee bit further on that slot if that's going to be run properly as it is. But obviously, we, you know, we want to remake this with some sort of gearbox up here instead. And the motor probably on the back here somewhere, or maybe off to the side, something like that, you know. Um, so the basics anyway, we've got this little dog's body thing, and so we, uh, these are casters from, uh, I think they're normally garden gate, sort of rollers, those, those wee, wee bearings there, but this, this whole structure is slightly too much, yeah, it's quite hefty, it's really quite big, um, yeah, that's where the, the data is coming in, you've seen that one. Um, you've got your main hub there. That's absolutely standard off of a, I don't know, Vauxhall Astra or something really boring. You know, uh, as we go into larger sizes, of course, that's going to need to be bigger. On the top of that, um, we've just made some wee bracket adapters, which you know, bolt right onto it, so that we can weld this shape to spread out the the mount for here and it, you know it's spread out and offset from that axis so that we can take the torque out you know so that we can twist against that bracing and uh, well it would be fine anyway because you you're offset from here now one problem we found was that this whole thing you know would sway and um, turn like that with, with just the, the way the kite loads up and various. So I used to have to put um, a couple of pegs in the ground, really big stakes to stop this swinging. So it would be nice if we had something to control that, smooth it, but allow you know changes in wind to happen and track them around. This big piece that, oh, it's all screwed onto the bench at the moment. Uh, well, it's two wee benches. It's probably unnecessary, although it is good to spread out the load from the the anchor. There's the anchor down there. I mean, it's good to, because you, the anchor, it's, you know, if we just have this piece, you've got maybe soft ground here. You could potentially, you know, bend that anchor over with the amount of, so maybe we could have a few anchors. I don't know, but it, it's good to spread the load out a bit at least. Um, like I say, there's, you know, there's just a standard plate anchor under there. I think that's 60 centimeters, 300 kilograms vertical. Um, the size of that, what are we looking at? Roughly 10 centimeters um, diameter across that, roughly. All right, so. That's the basics. Really that. Oh, this uh, bar here gives you an elevation adjustment. So, you know, I could change the, the pegging through these slots. That lifts this head up. It basically sets where, uh, you know, that, that length there, which 
through here. This whole assembly at the back end will tilt up like that um, if, you, if you lengthen that out. Although nowadays I've sort of set it solidly with another piece there because it was all a bit rattly. Okay, now onto the control and I haven't looked at this in a wee while. You get the power in power box, the batteries, two bike batteries um, down there. They would plug into here. You can turn you know either one or both on at the same time, keep them in parallel, but you know it tends to be only one. Um, as I was switching over, I'd occasionally have them both. Um or if it was really high power as well as the other thing. The there's an Arduino there which has uh, an anemometer coming into it. And that anemometer, uh, so it goes in there, it feeds a controller in here. This is the, the main control box. And this box, yeah, it takes the, the power in, takes the anemometer in, and it's got the connector to the uh, motor. And we've also got the, the sensor, uh, the, the inline tension sensor there. So all that goes in here, the anemometer, the motor the tension sensor and the power. And coming out as well, you've got an Arduino controller. Um, I think that's everything that's going to come back in, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, a bit of a rat's nest in here, so I'm not going to even attempt to describe it accurately in here at the moment. I'll send you the... I, well, I can send files for that. You've got a, a power for each of the boards, so you've got power for this Arduino, power for that one. Um, I think that gives power to the VESC as well. Yeah, because that comes from comes from over here. And yeah, there's an Arduino down here. Oh, hold on. Yeah, there's an Arduino down there, which is talking with the VESC. That's a cheap version of Arduino, that one I should. The other one, there's a, a tension sensor HX711. Uh, that converts the, you can calibrate the, uh, oh no, that, that's done in the Arduino. The, it just basically levels up the, the line signals. It's um, a four-way bridge, isn't it? A Wheatstone bridge, the HX711. And it just, it, it gives an output, in, I think on a line level to your Arduino. It basically tells you what the tension is. Um, it's probably a very boring video at this point, but let's carry on. <laughs> Sorry. So this, uh, yeah, this controller and the functions that you'll see in the software, there's a, a maximum current. This is for the regen. So you can turn up how much you, you want the maximum current to be. I tended to, you know, put that fairly low. You'll see in the software. Um, we have a startup brake. Now this is, um, you turn it on, it's, or turn it off and turn it on for your startup and it stops the you know that locks the wheel from going round or allows it only you know it puts the current up really high so it, don't, it goes around really quite slowly if it does and so once you've got the kite lifted in the air sat ready to spin you come back and you release the startup brake okay then you've got two controls here for how you want the system to run You've got your tip speed ratio control. And now tip speed ratio is what the wind speed is and what the rotation speed is. And you can work out from that what the tip speed ratio is. And we wanted that sitting normally at about four. Um, but if, if you wanted to release it, you put it higher. Okay. The TTR is tension torque ratio. And so basically that's looking at how much current we have on the brake and how much tension is on that. Now this is uh, you know, fairly crucial because we've got that tense transmission set going up that way. And if you've got a lot of resistance on here, but you've not got much lift, 
then as the kite as that turbine spins round, it's going to you know crash the whole system. So I'll, I'll use this hand instead. What you really want is lots of lift and not so much regen. You know, not so much braking, so that the lines all stay relatively straight, not too much twist, no over twist in that system. So that's what that parameter gives you there, the, the tension torsion ratio. And we're also looking, we also look at the pattern of how the thing is speeding up and slowing down, you know, how it's how it's behaving over the past wee while. And all those parameters go into the controller uh, and it decides what the, the current should be. And so it speaks to the VESC, it says, okay, we want the current at this, we want the current at that. What's your speed? And, and those two communicate backwards and forwards. Probably not fast enough, we should have a, a better communication system there, probably. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that uh, comes up with a final result. And everything, all, all the details of how it's operating get squirted out of this into a laptop. And, uh, just a recording on a terminal. There's, uh, this wasn't used other than for manual control sometimes, it wasn't used recently, nor was that white button there, uh, white knob there. This boost button, that was, if you noticed, it had over twisted. You know, if something had gone wrong where there was too much, um, yeah, too many turns on the, on the kite, too many turns at the top as compared to the bottom, so it had over twisted, you push that boost button and it drives this forward so that uh, it catches up. I've only ever got it to work a, a couple of times, uh, saving us from disaster because um, I think the speed, the way I'd set the speed on the VESC, possibly I think I had a limit wrong on that. There you are, there's your tour of a kite turbine grind station.